Yeah, it's good to see uh, a lot of familiar faces. Yeah, thanks for being here. So, CZ, honored to be here. First question, how was your summer? <laughs> uh, actually, it's actually much, much less work to do, so uh, uh, pretty relaxed today. Well, today I want to get into Binance. I want to get into what's next for you, maybe a little crypto talk. Uh, but before that, uh, just the elephant in the room, I want to learn about your experience. Uh, by the way, I'm Austin of Altcoin Daily. CZ, your first interview back. Um, what was your experience like in prison? Um, it's not good. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's less fun than now. So, uh, uh, but, um, so I think the whole experience is um, um, it's just very limiting in a lot of ways. Right? So uh, your freedom is taken away um, and you have nothing to do. So it gives you a lot of time to reflect. Um, I actually learned about a really important lesson. Um, for example, when everything is taken away from you, what do you miss the most? What I found is actually is the human connection that I miss the most. So I miss my kids, my family, my friends, mm. my colleagues, and the community. Um, so um, like there's, there's a lot of other things I miss, but not, not nearly at the high the level of degree that I miss the people. So, you know, you miss the food, you miss the nice bed. Um, so, but those things, you know, they don't bother me that much. So I think it helped me to refocus my priorities in life. Do you think it was a fair sentence? Oh, um, so that's a very subjective one. Um, <laughs> if you ask opinions from anybody, um, they all say different things, right? So um, I think, well, let me caveat with a couple uh, uh, conditions. So there's a plea agreement, which I agree to. Um, and I'm uh, in part of the plea agreement, I cannot say anything bad about the plea agreement. And I don't, I don't intend to. Um, I think, look, you enter into a deal, and that's the deal. Suffering from that, there's the sentencing, mm -hmm. you know, which I got four months for, uh, for incarceration. And then there was the process of going through the prison experience. So uh, in terms of sentencing, the judge has a really tough job, right? So if you, got, if you ask one side, uh, they will say, you know, it's too lenient. If you ask the other, yeah. my side would be like too harsh. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. I don't think about it's fair or not. So I can give you a couple of data points for, uh, for people to benchmark. Um, for this particular violation, which is a Banking Secrecy Act violation, uh, we did not register a financial company uh, in the U.S. when we had U.S. users, and we failed to implement an adequate anti-money laundering program. For this particular uh, violation, no one ever went to jail for a single violation, which is my, which is my chart. So I'm the only one who went to jail for this uh, in U.S. history. And just two weeks ago, there was a um, TD bank got fined for like 1.8 billion. Uh, and in, when I was reading that, there were cases, I think you described that there were executives taking money to facilitate, facilitate transactions and no one was named. Just the company was fine one for eight billion. Um, but you know, fair or not, that doesn't matter that much. Um, and then uh, um, the judge um, also said a bunch of really nice things about me in court. Right? So he said, look, he never seen that many support letters. Seemed like a nice standing guy. And then, but then he said um, he doesn't have to follow precedent. Um, that's when I knew things were not good. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, but then when I got, when I got into prison, uh, I found out actually four months is a really short sentence. Uh, everyone out there, everyone else there is like five years, 10 years, 15 years, eight years, they're only years, but nobody gets a few months of sentence. So from that perspective, you know, I was pretty lucky. So I think in the judge's mind, he treated me uh, very dignity. So again, it's a very subjective opinion. I try not to think about it. Um, I think everyone here will have their own opinions, um, but I just want to move on. Um, I think it is what it is. I, uh, I, I did the time, I addressed it. Um, I, you know, I just took it head, head on and now I can move on. Yeah. Let's talk about Binance. Two final questions on this though. Just a personal question I had. Do you make friends when you're in there or is it just... <laughs> uh, yes, so you pretty much have to make friends. Otherwise, if you're, if you're alone, um, if you have no community, then you get, you, you, you are not in love well, I think. So, uh, no, no financial advice. If you are Sinashi, we guard Sinashi for all quintics. Actually, I do have a couple of guards recognize me and then ask me like, what coin should I buy? <laughs> I'm like, I better not take the wrong coin. <laughs> no, I told them, look, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm from inside. I don't have any access to information, right? So um, there's no internet. Um, all my information is through like some, 
limited uh, live messages my friends and family send me, and we don't talk about crypto. So the, I did I get, a, get a few guys ask. I, I did get a few guards ask me that. Uh, I did make a couple of friends who I still keep in touch with. Um, I, you know, so, uh, um, but if, no, everywhere you go. Um, the, the, so to be honest, I think they're very nice people in prison. So they're, they're uh, uh, <laughs> uh, people are very chill. Um, I think, I, to, to be honest, I think a, a decent portion of them sh doesn't well, um, have no reason to be there, right? So they were they were in there for the wrong reason. They're super nice guys. They may have you no know, step on um, step in some area here or there, but it, they're, 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 some of them are for very minor violations, and they're there for a very long time. Uh, many of them are for there for like eight, ten years for very minor offenses. So um, some of them, yeah, for the ones that are supposed to be there, many of them are there for way too long. Um, so, but no, in prison they're very nice people. I didn't get, I didn't have any trouble from any of the inmates. Um, some of the guards treat us a little bit harshly, but also didn't have any issues from any guards. So from that perspective, I was very lucky that you know there was no physical harm. Um, I was never extorted. Before I went in, uh, my prison consultant, and that's the industry, prison consulting. Um, <laughs> uh, well, there's two million, there's, in the US alone, there's two million people in prison. It's one of the highest uh, prison popu per capita prison populations, right? So this is a burgeoning industry, it's growing. Um, <laughs> when it's supposed to be shown to you, right? So, uh, uh, and uh, the prison consultant's like, look, and right before I went, like there was news reports of, I, I'm gonna be the richest person ever to be in prison. So that doesn't help me from a safety perspective. But I think, they're, I think the journalists don't care. They just want a quick buck. Um, but my prison consultants like scared me, like saying, look, you don't deposit too much money on your commissary account. Um, just deposit 50 bucks. Right? And then when I go there, every other guy had like 200 bucks on their account. So I'm the poor guy. <laughs> so overall, no issues. And uh, I met a few friends who I still keep in touch with. And I'm trying to help a few of them to fight their case. Um, uh, through legal means, uh, hopefully to get them out earlier. And uh, and some of the guys there, you know, um, they one guy, I think Michael is probably somewhere. Yeah, Michael's right there. So Michael Sandals, he 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 did 27 years in prison for um, uh, movies on marijuana 40 years ago, right? But now marijuana is like legal. So um, and then he also got a university degree while he was in prison. Uh, he wrote six books. Uh, so there are guys who like you know, really, really push, and it's a very difficult environment to do that. Um, I get access to a computer for 15 minutes each time, and then every 15 minutes I get kicked off. And then within that 15 minutes on that computer, there's no cut and paste. There's no paste function. So uh, whatever, if I write a paragraph and I move to one paragraph to on top of the other, I cut it out, I can retype everything. Um, so I, so um, the, the, the tools, that, uh, in Michael Stankos days, they, they, don't even, they don't even have computers. So, um, so, but there are a lot of people who are there buying books, uh, reading, learning, getting degrees, etc. So, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of really nice people there. Yeah. CZ, my brother and I have been at this conference, block, Binance Blockchain Week, for two days now. The energy is electric. I'm going to talk about Binance. And the biggest question on everybody's mind is, what is your relationship with Binance now? Ah, uh, so, yeah, so... Um, I have stepped down from the CEO role. Uh, I am not supposed to be involved in any day-to-day -day operations of the company. Um, my shareholder rights, as far as I know, are not impacted. So I'm still a I'm, today I'm still a large shareholder of finance. Uh, I believe I can still request for information, etc. I just cannot make decisions or give orders. So and uh, the relationship is actually a pretty good one, uh, given that now there's a bunch of other guys working really hard, and I'm forced to retire. So um, when that first happened, uh, the first month was a bit difficult. You know, it was, it was emotional. It was uh, difficult to detach. It's a company that uh, I put my heart and soul in and for seven years, etc. But I always thought, you know, the CEO should not be on the post for more than 10 years because you know, the, uh, the, the world changes, right? Now there's AI. There's, I didn't spend a lot of time learning about AI before. I didn't have a lot of time to, to look at, you know, even DeFi in a lot of detail, right? So, uh, um, so now I actually have more time to look at all of those stuff. So I think it's good that um, looking back now, it was actually, there's, it's, it, there's a lot of good stuff about being forced to step down. See, if I stepped on myself, if I say, hey, look guys, I'm quitting, 
a bunch of you guys will be pissed off and it's like, this guy ran out of stamina. And uh, uh, so now I'm forced to step down. Um, and so I'm like, well, this is not my choice, but I'm um, actually, now I have a lot of time. And also um, um, just looking back, right? I think I'm actually very, very fortunate for a number of reasons. Um, I still have a little bit of funds left to deploy, to do, to, to be able to do stuff. So, so that's a strong enabler. Um, I think uh, my reputation has changed but in the, I'm not trying to minimize the offense. So I think that's a serious, that is serious that violation is a serious offense. But um, it's also validation that there's no fraud. Um, there's no, no, no users lost money with us. Um, so that's, in some regards, like I believe if you ask anybody in the room, the, uh, my reputation is still pretty strong. Um, and then on top of that, as I said, now I'm really lucky that I actually have a lot more time now. And I'm not super young, I'm not very young, but I'm not also not super old. So I still have energy to do more stuff. So uh, very few people are in this fortunate position to be able to do these things that I can do now. Yeah. I read a headline that um, there's a lifetime ban on managing any crypto exchange. Is that true? And will you still be investing in crypto projects? Sure, so there's two, yeah. So, uh, so for the first question is, um, based on the best of my knowledge, there's no word say lifetime or ban. Those two words doesn't exist in, in, the, um, in my plea agreement with the government. Uh, what is in the agreement is I step down as CEO. I don't think there's any timelines for it, <clears throat> but you know, everything changes. Agreements can be updated with new agreements, even governments change. Um, but I have no plan to go back to be the CEO. I finally got away from that post and I think the team's doing a good job. Um, so um, I don't have any need uh, to go back. I don't have any wish to go back. So even like even today, if I was allowed to go back, I probably won't. Um, and uh, so I think the uh, lifetime ban is just a creative uh, journalism where they invented two words to make it more sensational. Is it wrong? We're not sure. Um, is it right? It's, those words does not was not in the in the agreement. The agreement is public, so it's a public uh, agreement. Um, so that's that's my that's to the best of my knowledge. What was your second question? Will you still be investing in crypto? Oh yeah, absolutely. So right now I'm really doing, only doing two things. Uh, I'm working on Giggle Academy and then I'm doing investments, right? So, and then on the investments, there's really three sub parts. Uh, there's blockchain, there's AI, and there's biotech. Um, so very simple. Um, and what, those are three big areas. So I no longer want to lead any project myself. Um, I don't think I have the energy to do that anymore. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not as hungry either. Um, no, I'm not as hungry as I was seven years ago. Um, so now I want to be able, I want to help other entrepreneurs uh, to uh, build their own companies. So I can I can help them with uh, funding, with uh, advice, with coaching, mentoring if they if they want it, um, with uh, access to other resources, uh, connections, etc. So that's what I uh, that's what I want to do. So I think uh, I have a I have a few mentors who I value really strongly, um, and um, I would like to become a mentor myself uh, for those who uh, who wants to. I'm sure a lot of people in this room would love you as a mentor. <laughs> uh, I hope so. <laughs> um, I want to talk about Giggle Academy. I have plenty of questions. But before that, on Altcoin Daily, me and my brother, we speak to an audience of over 3 million across all social platforms. And one of the number one questions we get is outlook for crypto in 2025. Are you still just as bullish on crypto next year? Uh, okay, I'll try not to give any financial advice, but, um, uh, and also, um, uh, history doesn't predict the future, but I, we can, I cannot predict the future. I can analyze the history. Uh, historically, um, Bitcoin has went through very clear four-year cycles. So 2013 was a bull year. Uh, 2017 was a bull year. So actually, 2012 was a recovery year. I think very, most people don't look, that, don't look back that far. And then 2013 was a bull year. Uh, 2016 was a recovery year. 2014, 2015 were tough. 2017 was a uh, 2016 was a recovery year, um, and then 2017 went all, went all the way uh, away over, and then 2020 was a recovery year, and then 2021 was a um, a bull year, um, and uh, this year now we're kind of back to the previous all time highs. So like the 2024 is a recovery year based on uh, the pre based on the current analysis or based on the current prices. Um, Next year, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm overall the long term for the industry. I think there's so much more that has to be built, uh, that needs to be built, and that will be built. So I think the industry will get bigger. Uh, more and more people will use crypto, 
Um, so, and with more people use crypto, the utility value will increase. So long term, I'm still very, very bullish. Short term, it's very hard to predict. What aspects, in you know, a couple sentences, what aspects of crypto are you most bullish on? Is it DeSci? Is it meme coins? Um, well, actually, I wouldn't go that specific um, because um, uh, it's very difficult to it's very difficult to predict like that specifically, like which one's going to be the next one. You know, beginning of um, twenty beginning of 20, 2017, I probably could not have said ICOs is the next thing. But by June, the, the, the trend was clear. By by July, we launched a platform. By December, we the largest platform. So uh, and uh, um, I think it's a company. Depends on which project explode in those in, the, in, in those in those uh, niche uh, or in those small sectors. Um, I think all of those have tradition tradi uh, have potential to 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 grow. Uh, right now, like I'm meeting a lot of founders this morning. I met founders who are using AI with a very inter interesting integration with blockchain. Ideas I never thought about. Right. So uh, if any one of those projects take off, that sector will, will will become big. So it's very hard to predict. But I'm you know, I'm just. I'm just trying to support any all the builders in, in the space and then see what happens. Let's talk about legislation. I want to pick your brain. Uh, how do you see legislation today and also where is it going as a guy in the space? Um, well, I think um, currently today, well, the legislation regulations are improving. Um, and in certain, some countries like here, they're improving fast. In other countries, uh, many of them are, especially in bigger countries, they tend to move slow, slower. Uh, bigger countries do move slower. There are more departments, more more people to discuss, etc. But overall, I think it's actually moving in a very positive direction. I'll give you another example, right? Just personal, personal, uh, personal feelings. A week before I was sentenced, in middle April of this year, uh, Elizabeth Warren declares a war on crypto. This is like a week before my sentencing, and then the judge sentences me, and then I went to prison. And then by June, Donald Trump is pro crypto. By by end of June, uh, both parties are pro crypto. I'm still sitting in prison. Like what the? <laughs> so what the hell happened? Um, so did I? Could, should I be just waiting for two two months? Uh, so uh, so it, it shows that not now the uh, uh, the well, but that basically shows that the people wants crypto. When the people want to wants crypto, then the government has to respond. So I think it's yeah, I think it's moving in the right direction. I live in the U.S. That's my POV. And crypto is very much an election issue. In your opinion, Harris or Trump, who do you think is better for crypto? Ooh, uh, I have no idea. Uh, so I, I, will, I will not comment on any election uh, topics because um, uh, right now I got enough trouble in, with the US laws. I know, have, I know they have a election interference law, so anything I say publicly could be taken out of context, so I don't want to touch it. So I, now I don't even want to get close to the line. I don't even want to see the line. So I just want to stay as far away as possible. Yeah. So uh, no comments. I think both parties are pro crypto. That's fantastic. I love it. I respect it. And I love it. Yeah, give it up. As we look to legislation, regulation in the future, again, I have a U.S. point of view. What's one policy or one piece of legislation that you think is super important? Well, I think the uh, most fundamental one is actually just classification of crypto, right? So now there's so many debates about, uh, well, in most other countries, they just treat it as money. Japan treats, uh, recognized Bitcoin as a currency. Uh, many other countries recognize Bitcoin as a uh, crypto as a currency. But of course, there are different types of cryptos. It depends on coin, I guess. Um, but I think in the US, that's like kind of the large debate right now. Um, and again, I won't comment too much. There, there, there are ongoing losses uh, with SEC, et cetera. Yeah. CZ, final questions as we wrap up. I want to talk about Bitcoin, and of course, I want to know about Giggle Academy. But let's just say, one year from now, you and I are at Binance Blockchain Week 2025. We're on this stage. Doesn't have to be about price, but where will Bitcoin be slash crypto? Um, a year from now, a one year is really hard to predict. Uh, but I think there's a high chance if there's high chance that you know the future follows the history. So then we will be in a pretty good place. Yeah.